name's Mark Collins. Um, I was in the Royal Anglians as an infantry soldier from 2003 to 2007. And in the summer of 2005, I served in B Company 5 Platoon in Iraq. While serving in Iraq, we was based in uh, Camp Chindit, which is Azabaya, just outside uh, Shaiba Log Bay. Um, an ID had uh, exploded um, over at two mosques roundabout. Um, we wasn't fully aware of the details, just knew that the uh, British Army had been hit. Um, we were stood to. I was still in a bit of a blur uh, after waking up from sleeping. Um, we headed out of the gate um, towards two mosques. Um, it, it's a, to describe two mosques, it's a very large roundabout. Obviously, it had two mosques on it, and it was a main route in and out of Azabaya. Um, so we headed over there at speed, and it's probably around midday. And there was us and another vehicle in convoy, um, and we started heading over to see what had actually uh, happened and what had gone on, and the casualties or injuries had occurred. Uh, so we headed off to two mosques. Um, as we landed, we've uh, exited the vehicles to put cover on. Um, at this point, there was no medics uh, that was with us. I think they was in another base or deployed elsewhere. Uh, someone had taken the ambulance with us, um, put cover on, and one of the privates was in the back of the ambulance and a call for uh, another soldier to go and help them was put up. Um, I left my position, ran over to the ambulance um, to get inside where the two casualties already were, uh, started taking my kit off and started treating one, it was uh, one casualty uh, to me and one to the other private that was involved um, and that was where uh, the main treatment um, occurred from, Shiber, uh, from the two mosque roundabout all the way up until we landed at the hospital in Shiba. So while I was in the ambulance, it seemed a very long time from start to finish. Um, we'd done everything we could in the back of the ambulance between myself and the other private to um, keep uh, both men alive, keep keep pulses and you know uh, triaging and uh, uh, sorting out any of the treatment they needed. Um, we arrived at the hospital. Both men um, were taken out, um, and at this point, we'd done everything we could um, to you know, given the best chance of surviving, best possibility of surviving. And it was at the point we were leaving the hospital, we was told uh, that both men had passed. And that was um, probably an hour, hour, hour or so after we'd arrived at the hospital. So we gave them the best fighting chance from start to finish. And it was only as we left, we were told they were both passed away. So both the soldiers that had, um, were killed in action uh, were part of the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers, um, part of the same division as uh, ourselves. Although uh, we didn't know them personally and I'd never seen them or met them uh, any time before, it hit um, especially everyone on the ground and the surrounding um, companies, platoons and most people that was out there hit hard because um, it was the first loss we had been involved in in Iraq since we'd been out there. I think I've, I felt more numb and didn't know how to feel or how to act um, and then that continued for the months and uh, probably years after until I worked out how to deal with um, the events that actually occurred. So in 2007, um, while the rest of the regiment was in Afghanistan, I was discharged with uh, PTSD. Um, at the time, I remember feeling ashamed. It was not something that was spoken about and you know, um, the help wasn't there as a whole um, throughout everywhere. Um, men at the time didn't talk about it. I felt ashamed to be associated, um, you know, with my pals that were in Afghanistan. So I distanced myself from everyone. Um, medals got rid of everything because it was easier to say I wasn't in the army than say I was. Uh, I'll start the <laughs> Uh, my advice to people now is to talk about it. It took me a long time to um, have a chat, especially with close friends and family, um, of how the events made me feel. Um, you know, I spent a long time thinking I hadn't done um, what I could have for them. But, you know, you look back now, it's easier to talk about it. It's easy, easier to um, 
advise, advise people on um, you know, the best way to deal with it and the signs and symptoms of PTSD. Um, everyone's different. Um, it just takes someone to sit down and listen. And I think with, I think everywhere as a whole has come on leaps and bounds, but especially the army. Um, I think it's more recognised now, and but more and more people are happier to say they suffer with mental health or PTSD. Remembrance Day for me, um, I think it helps because it brings everyone together and they can um, be in a position to remember the fallen, but not only the fallen, the people that have been injured or affected by um, their military career, not only their themselves, but anyone that's um, any family. It's a day to remember everyone from those that are directly affected or the wider community that will allow people to um, heal, remember um, and just never forget.